Uh, meanwhile, said another chapter to that Luis Suarez book uh, behind you. Atletico Madrid <laughs> looks like his destination. Yeah, Atletico were, 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 were quite clear about this earlier in the transfer window that they felt that it was very, very difficult to make this kind of deal happen. Of course, the way that you can make this happen, because the, the financial implications are absolutely huge, is twofold. One, of course, is to make Luis Suarez cheaper, and one way of doing that, of course, is for Suarez to, to, to deal with Barcelona, to get a reasonable payoff and to turn up as a free agent. And not only turn up as a free agent, but to turn up as someone who believes that he's already basically been paid for most of this year, in other words, would accept a lower salary from a club, in this case, Atletico Madrid. The other is to generate the kind of money to enable you to do this, and that would be done through the departure of Alvaro Morata. It looks like there's momentum building now. It looks like this is likely to happen. And, and, and I think it's a, a tremendously exciting prospect. One we talked about a few weeks ago, remember, um, the, the idea of, of Suarez and Simeone being together. And imagine the Suarez, Simeone and Diego Costa trio. Now that's, <laughs> that's fighting talk. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely fighting talk. Uh, Sid, I wanted to talk about the reaction to Ricky Puge. Obviously, he was the one shining light, if there was any, under Kiki Setien, of course, coming in mm. and doing well. Uh, how much is it true Ronald Koeman said, no, we don't want you to go out on loan for a year to gain experience? Well, it's curious because Ronald Koeman said that it wasn't true, but then proceeded to point out that it was. Uh, what he, I think, was upset about was that was 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 that was the way that it was um, presented in terms of the tone. He he said, "Look, I didn't tell him I wasn't counting on him. I told him that he's a young player. Young players need to be playing. They need to be playing a lot of games. There's a huge amount of competition for his place. And I told him that because of that, there wouldn't be many opportunities this year. And because he's young and because he has a future at the club." And he didn't actually say these words, but beyond this season, the right thing to do is to is to look for some sort of short term solution so that he's playing a lot of games. So, yes, fundamentally, he's told Ricky Pooch that, you know, you're not going to play this season. Now, there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, one is fundamentally that there are very good players in front of him. The other, of course, is that, that Koeman has changed the formation from a 4-3-3 in which Ricky Pooch's natural position would be as what's known as an interior in Spain. So one of those inside midfield positions, either side of, of Busquets. And, and that's so he's moved from that to a 4-2-3-1, which means Ricky Pooch has got one or two choices. One of the two deep midfielders, which really isn't his role, or behind the striker. Now, behind the striker is actually quite a nice role for him. It's probably a little further forward than he would like, but it would suit him very well. But of course, if you're playing behind the striker, ah, see, that's where the problem comes because Koeman in these, in these two friendly games he's had so far has played either Antoine Griezmann or Lionel Messi there, and there's even been moments for Coutinho. Those are three players who, however good Ricky Pucci is, those three players are ahead of him. Before I let you go, Sid, how is Messi? What's going on? I feel like we haven't talked about him for a moment. <laughs> well, um, in Spain, they, they have analysed and reanalyzed and slowed down and sped up and fast-forwarded and zoomed in <laughs> on the handshake that he gave to Ronald Koeman the other day during, during the friendly game. The two of them didn't really look at each other. And, and the amount of amateur psychology that's gone on around this has been absolutely off the scale. <laughs> it's been kind of enjoyable in a completely crazy sort of way. Um, he scored a couple of goals. In that sense, he's looked pretty good. But I just don't think we really know anything until the, until the season kind of moves on into the two or three, first two or three weeks of competitive games. In fact, in a funny sort of way, you look at last season, you could say the season doesn't really get measured until they play very significant opposition in the Champions League or until they play Atletico Madrid or Real Madrid or Sevilla or one of those really big teams in La Liga. Sid Lowe, go and say hello to your family. Thank you very much, as always, uh, for joining us. The latest edition, by the way, of the Gab and Jules podcast. He's Mark Ogden as their special guest. You can listen to that now over on the website.